Good morning. Welcome to the fifth lecture, the last lecture of this week one. And today, as I said, I will be discussing about how to do lettering, how to write on your graphic sheets. Now, before I start that, I think we need to understand what is the need for writing and how should we write. So, the need for writing is to convey whatever we are drawing in words, but in very simple words. We do not write paragraphs about design, we write basic minimal things, for example, section, elevation, plan. So, we write minimally on our graphic sheets, whether it be engineering graphics or architectural graphics. And the second thing is that it has to be read in a very clear manner. Unlike the presentation drawings, unlike the artistic drawings where we want to emphasize on the beauty of the design, the architectural graphic drawing or engineering graphic drawing is the drawing which is used to implement the design in reality, to construct. So, that is what we are going to be reading this drawing for. And since we are reading this drawing for actually implementing the particular design in reality, we have to make it very clear and it has to be unambiguous and the same thing is through the lettering as well. So, it is a no fancy, it is sans serif font, so there are no curves towards the ends. It is very simple straight lettering that we use and each letter, each alphabet is going to be framed in a square, not in the visible sense. So, we do not really actually draw a frame, but if you look at it, it is actually within a square that most of these alphabets will be drawn, will be written. So, when I tell you how to draw each one of these and of course, it will come with practice. Very simple thing, it has to be sans serif, no curves and preferably all the letters in a particular sheet are going to be of the same proportion the sizes may vary. So, if I am writing, if you remember the bottom title had introduction to graphics which was a very big font, while the name on the side was in a slightly smaller font, the captions which I was writing on the sheet were even smaller. So, depending upon the importance and how the text will be read, we will vary the font size, but the font type will remain constant and in most often cases we use gothic. There are a couple of other fonts also which we can use, but this is the graphic font. This is the graphic format of writing. So, today we are going to see how to write. I will tell you on this graph paper, you do not need to write on a graph paper. You can write on your cartridge sheets only. You can use a bigger sketchbook an A3 size sketchbook to do all these exercises, whatever I am telling you here and uh, you can practice. So, when you start practicing, you have to draw all these fonts in different font sizes. So, as big as say 1.5 centimeters and as small as say 3 mm. So, that is the variation which you should try to make your hand firm. Just remember the strokes, how each of the stroke has to be done has to be made. So, I will start with the straight line letters, the simplest of the ones and I will be drawing freehand. So, to explain what I am doing is I am taking a square of 3 centimeter by 3 centimeter for each alphabet so that it is easier for you to learn to remember. Now, the very first alphabet that, uh, that uh, is the simplest one is I and for the architectural graphics, we just use a straight line. In case we want to add the top and bottom horizontal uh, lines, it is just a total of one unit. So, in a 6 by 6 unit, in a 6 by 6 square, uh, this will come out to be 2 units. So, 2 units top and bottom and 6 units total height. So, the total height anyways remains 6 units and the width will vary. Now, next we have L. So, L has a proportion of 5 by 6. So, the height remains 6 and the width becomes 5. So, we have 5 units by 6 units. Then we have T.
T is a 6 by 6 alphabet. So, we have entire square covered for the uh, T. Next we have F, F is a 6 by 5. So, you have to make straight lines. And the middle line of the F, the shorter line will be half the width that is 3 units here. E is very similar. Similar to F. We just add a line in the bottom. H is again 5 by 6. V is a 6 by 6 alphabet. Remember the strokes as I make them. In almost all cases, you never draw a line from bottom towards the top. You will always draw a line from the top to the bottom, which is how you normally write as well and from left to right. So, if you have to make a horizontal line, it has to be left to right and then top to bottom is how a curve, uh, 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 any line while lettering will be drawn. A is similar to V, it is a 6 by 6 unit letter. And this is how we draw. So, it is the first stroke is down like this, second here and third here. This is the most common way of writing these alphabets. The strokes will usually be following the same pattern. And very rarely would you find that this sequence is altered, the sequence is changed. And once you have picked up the format, the sequence of making these strokes, very rarely would you differ from these and your handwriting would normally come very uh, constant, similar to, uh, you know, each letter, each alphabet will be similar to each other. W is the only letter which is wider than 6 units. So, it is 8 units that we take. So, that is W in 4 strokes. So, you have 2 V's but thinner V's. So, W overall has a 6 by 8, the width is 8, it is the only letter wider than this. Then we have M, M is again a 6 by 6 alphabet. So, we have unlike W, we have the edges as straight and the internal ones as inclined. Next we have N, N is again a 5 by 6. This is 5 by 6 of N and then we have a K. K is again a 5 by 6 alphabet. If you draw a thin line here, this is how K is drawn. So, that is the way of writing a K. Next we have X, X is again a 5 by 6 alphabet. 
the top triangle is smaller than the bottom one. So, the lines actually join from half a unit inside uh, sorry one unit inside on top to full six units wide in the bottom triangle. Y is again a six unit. These are all straight line letters that I am talking about and then we have Z, Z is again a 5 by 6 letter. Now the only thing is that the top line is only 4 units while the bottom line is 5 units. So, Z starts slightly uh, recessed but in the bottom the base is bigger. These are all the straight line letters that we would have in uh, we would be using in architectural graphics English alphabets. Now we will move on to the curved ones. Now in this font that we are using the curved fonts are all perfect circle. So, if you if you look at this you would actually be drawing O like a circle. So, that is O. It is a 6 by 6, it is in 6 by 6. I will be making all the alphabets in a circle that is O. If you have to make a Q, so what we do is we make a line joining the center with a unit recessed here that is Q out of O. So, the O is just a circle, Q is a circle with this line joining center to a one unit recess. In case we have to do a C, it is again out of the circle, the same circle. Once you have practiced enough, you would not be needing to draw these guides. This is, so C is actually a part of the same circle which is constituting O and Q, but it just stops one unit inside. So, it is not 6 by 6, actually it is a 5 by 6 unit, uh, 5 by 6 uh, size C, but if you were to complete the circle it would become a 6 by 6, but it would just stop right short here. So, that is what C is. If you have to make G here, it is exactly continuation of C. So, where you stop C, you just make this line and it becomes a G. So, O and Q, C and G, they are all together. Next, we have a J. So, a J is also a 5 by 6 unit letter. Now, you draw a straight line and in the bottom 2. So, it is actually an ellipse. So, the curve actually starts 2 units from the bottom and then we have 5 units here. So, mid of that. So, it is actually an ellipse. That is how we would make a J. That is a J and in case you have to make a U, we just complete the other side of the line as well. Okay. So, that is that's J up till here and in case it is U, it is like this and the strokes of the curve will actually go like this. So, that is how we will be making the curves here. Same is with these curves here. So, we make them these curves in four different parts. So, that is how we are making. So, O, Q, C, G, J and U and the last one is D. D is again a 5 by 6 letter. So, one unit is straight and then we have 
a circle which is semicircle which is making the curved part of the D. These are the this is the order of the stroke that we will be using. Next we have P P is again a five letter alphabet. So, we have straight units uh, 2 units straight and 3 units curved that is how P would come and a straight line. That is P. R is within P. So, you have this uh, line at the end of this uh, fifth unit and assuming you are continuing this you know straight line from the top left uh, corner to the bottom right corner the line which is remaining is the line of R. So, from P we actually make this R and that is how the R would be done. The next we have B, B is again a 5 by 6 unit. So, it is not exactly in the center that we make we divide the uh, B vertically and also this the top part is uh, only 4 units slightly more than 4 units. So, the top part will come and this is uh, not exactly 3 units it is 2 and a half units here. So, we get B in 2 and a half by 4 units the top part and the bottom part is in 3 and a half and 5 units. So, that is how the B is done 1, 2 and then horizontal line. So, 1, 2, 3, 4. that is how the B would be done. So, these are all the alphabets in uh, of English that we will be using for architectural graphics. And whenever you are writing whatever font size it could it would be the proportions should ideally remain the same. So, if you start practicing in different fonts you would be able to master these. Now, I would very quickly I would also oh sorry maybe I will just keep it. So, now I will tell you the numbers the numerics because all the dimensions are done in these numerics. So, I will start with the simplest one which is 1. So, it is a simple straight line you could just draw one like a straight line which is most often used, but in case you want to make the horizontal line in the bottom it is again those two units and one single unit one by one unit for the top inclined one. Okay. The 0 is actually made in a 4 by 6 unit. So, we actually get an ellipse here. So, that is what we are getting in a 0. So, 0 is different from an O that is what the 0 would be. So, 4 different strokes 3 different strokes rather. and we get a 0. Okay. Now, 6 is out of 0 only. So, what you get when, when we have to draw 6, so we have a 4 by 6 ellipse if it was complete. So, we have a 4 by 6 ellipse, but we do not complete it definitely. So, what we do we have another ellipse which is in the bottom. So, we keep it short 
and that is how we would draw a 6 using the same font. So, that 6 and 9 is reverse. So, we have the same 0. So, you can roughly draw it or you could just keep it in your mind and the upper one is almost an ellipse. So, that is what we that is what we get I am sorry. So, that is that is 9 for us. Again we have this 4 which is a 5 by 6 unit, but the vertical line of a 4 is drawn at 4 units. So, 4 units and from the bottom we leave uh, 1 and a half units here and this horizontal line will go all the way up to 5 units. So, that is how the 4 would come. 7 is slightly simpler, it is again a 5 by 6 units, a horizontal line and in the bottom it is at 2 units that you will slightly curve it. That is how the 7 would be done. 5 is again a, <coughs> a 5 by 6 unit but the top line is only 4 units. So, 4 units, 2 and a half units down and then the rest of the portion will come all the way up to 5 towards the mid of it. So, it is a continuous curve that is how the 5 would be done. Then we have 8 and 3. So, for 8, 8 is again a 5 by 6 units. Uh, the top portion is slightly more than uh, 2 units, 2 and a half units and taking the center it is a 5 by 6 units. So, taking the center at around 2 and a half. So, what we have actually is top is a separate ellipse and bottom is a separate ellipse. So, bottom ellipse is 5 units by 3 and a half units and top one is a 4 unit sorry 3 and a half unit by 2 and a half units that is how the 8 would be done. And to make a 3 out of an 8 all we do is remove almost the half part of this same 8. So, we have the same size and the 3 comes half a unit inside. So, we have a part of the curve of Eight. So, we do not just actually half it, but we just remove the part of the curve for the top and bottom curves and in the middle one we retain the entire half. So, that is how 3 that is how 3 would be done. 2 is again a 5 by 6 units. So, what we are doing is this is very similar to how we were doing 8. So, the top part is same as 8 we will start it similar to 8, but instead of making it straight we would just bring it like we did for 7. So, the top part is of 8 and the bottom part is of 7. So, that is how we would do it. So, 2 is actually not going all the way up to 5 it is stopping only at 4. So, that is how we would make a 2.
all right. So, that is how we have drawn almost everything one thing which is left one alphabet which is left is S and S is quite tricky most of the times it is again in a 5 by 6. So, just like you do an 8. So, assume you are doing an 8 here. So, I am drawing it in very light. So, we have a bigger ellipse and then we have a smaller ellipse. So, instead of drawing this complete thing we would just draw part of 8 here. That is your S. So, now we have completed all the alphabets and also the numerals which is which is mostly what we are going to be using while we are dimensioning while we are writing the captions we are writing the titles we are it is called labeling. So, when we are labeling the sheet these are the alphabets and numerics that you will be going to use in your sheet. Please practice these in different font heights different font sizes, but retain the same proportion. So, as you practice more and more and graph paper is really good for that because you have these squares and you can conveniently practice within these squares you can have different font sizes and you can practice. So, practice as much before you actually write on the uh, cartridge sheet without any grid and graph and uh, your, home for, uh, your hand has already become reasonably firm to work with the pencil and these numbers freehand. So, that is all for uh, in the lecture today. Thank you for joining. We will be starting in the next week starting with geometrical drawings, geometrical construction, dimensioning and different kinds of uh, curves which are used in geometric drawing. So, thank you for joining this week. See you again next week. Bye-bye.